Hi, I'm Rob Rader, and this is the third video about sequencing scales for bass guitar. In the first couple of videos, we took an ordinary A major scale and sequenced it in a couple different ways. The scale is just an A, a B, a C sharp, a D, an E, an F sharp, a G sharp, and another A an octave above the first one. And we looked at rearranging that scale into a sequence of thirds, which sounds like this. And we also sequenced that scale in groups of three, which sounds like this. So one way of looking at sequencing is to think of taking each note in the scale and doing something a little bit different with it. In the case of thirds, we're adding the note one third above the scale. So the third of A turned out to be C sharp in this scale. Then we took the second scale note B, played the note a third above it, took the third scale note C sharp, played its third in this scale, which is E, and then D added its third, E added its third, F sharp added its third, G sharp added its third, and at that point we get to the A on the top of the scale. The sequencing in groups of three took the first scale note and just added the next two notes in the scale above it. So from A we went to A, B, C sharp, and then we took the second note in the scale, B, and repeated that process, B, C sharp, D, scale note plus the next two. And then for the third note in the scale, the same thing again, C sharp, and the next two notes, D and E. walk that process all the way through the scale till we get to the octave. So what are some of the other ways that we could be sequencing this scale? Well, if we can play groups of three from each note in the scale, it wouldn't be that much harder to play groups of four. Let's try that out. So if we start on the first scale note, the A, a group of four from there is A, B, C sharp, and then a D. Moving on to the next scale note, we have a B and a C sharp, a D, and then an E. Moving on to scale note number three, we would have C sharp, D, E, and F sharp. On to D, E, F sharp, G sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, top A, and just continue until we reach the octave at the end of the scale. So without any vocal accompaniment, that would sound like this. We could descend the scale using the same method. sounds a lot like that. Another thing that we could do to expand on those groups of three would be to simply reverse the order of the notes within each of the groups that we created. So group number one had been A, B, C sharp. We can just play C sharp, B, A instead. Second group in that sequence had been B, C sharp, and D. We're turning it around and that's D, C sharp, B. And the sequence played that way would sound like this. and the scale, we'd just do the reverse of that. We could have rearranged the scale in fourths instead of thirds. Or we could take an idea such as putting a scale step and a third together in a sequence. So we'd have A, B, D for lick number one, and then the second scale on B would go C sharp E, C sharp D F sharp, D E G sharp, E F sharp A. We could have done that in a slightly different way if we'd started with the third and then used the scale step. In that case, we'd have a sequence that sounds like this. start thinking about the fact that any of these sequencing ideas could be used with any scale that we know. Like for example, we could take those reverse groups of three and use a natural minor scale. We'd have or if we had groups of four with a natural minor. And we 
also know in Mixolydian mode, there's another four diatonic modes. There's the harmonic minor scale and all its modes. It could end up being a heck of a lot of stuff to practice, which really is good because then you've got a whole lot of different things you can play and you're comfortable working with any type of harmonic or melodic raw material that you might come across in any tune. So that's a lot of stuff. Time to get started.